Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Christo Zuves, and I'm the medical director of Zuves Fertility Center in Foster City, California. I've been doing IVF now for more than 30 years. The clinic is located 10 minutes south of the San Francisco International Airport, and we treat patients from all over the San Francisco Bay Area, from out of state, and also from all over the world. Today we're going to talk about the immunology of pregnancy. You will be able to see that the conceptus, which is the combination of the egg and the sperm, is genetically different from the woman who carries, which means that the conceptus is actually a transplant. Why then is it not rejected? We talk about pregnancy being a miracle. It is, and even more than we realize. The egg and the sperm get together and they form the conceptus, which is the fetus plus the placenta. What makes this a miracle on top of a miracle is the fact that the conceptus is genetically a mix of the sperm and the egg provider. It is in fact a transplant. The immune system patrols looking for invaders which could be pathogens or non-self tissue. How is it that a woman can nurture a genetically different being inside of herself without rejection? If you think about it, we can't do things like organ transplants without having a close tissue match and taking immunosuppressant medications. So how do women do this? Women have evolved a remarkable ability to shield the developing baby from immune attack. Peter Medawar, working in England in the 1950s, was fascinated by this problem. He wondered to himself, how does the pregnant mother continue to nourish within itself for many weeks and months a fetus that is an antigenically foreign body. Without going into too much detail about a very complicated subject, there appear to be three main mechanisms which work together to pull off this miracle. The placenta acts as a physical barrier. The second is the antigens or protein markers on the conceptus may be immature and they may be shielded from the mother's immune system radar by the protein called HLAG. The third is the fact that the mother's immune system may be temporarily downregulated and thereby giving the conceptus a pass. Here is a diagram of the placenta of a little mouse which illustrates the first point for us. The blood of the mother and the fetus do not actually mix, but they flow alongside each other in the placenta. This facilitates the transfer of nutrients and oxygen to the fetus and the removal of metabolites and waste products, which are then excreted by the mother. This is what we mean by a relative physical barrier. The cells of the placenta go into stealth mode and they produce a protein called HLAG and they also modify the way their cells look to the mother's immune system so as not to raise an immune alarm. This is number two. At the same time, the mother's immune system talks to the antigens from the conceptus and the maternal system downregulates itself and switches off the ability of the mother's immune system to attack the transplant. This is mechanism number three. This schematic shows how HLAG could prevent the natural killer cells from attaching to the transplant and therefore blocks the ability of the NK cells to release toxins like TNF-alpha and interferon-gamma. 
If this elaborate method of protecting the transplant from being rejected does not work perfectly, it can either lead to failed implantation, early pregnancy loss, or later on, intrauterine growth restriction, also called IUGR, or pregnancy-induced hypertension, also called PIH. If these three mechanisms work well, then the pregnant woman is in the nurturing or TH2 state on this uh, uh, schematic on, the, on your slide, whereas failure of any of these three mechanisms could move the patient into the TH1 state, which is hostile to pregnancy. The good news is that we can do testing which will tell us whether a woman falls on this spectrum and apply the necessary treatment. Sometimes infertility or recurrent loss is due to immune activation and here are some of the tests that we can do to see if we are in the TH1 dominated state or not. So if you look at the list of tests you can see we can test for a number of antibodies, anti-thyroid antibodies, anti-phospholipid antibodies. We can also test for cells, the natural killer cells that actually do the the attacking on behalf of the immune system and we can also check for cytokines these are the toxic chemicals that natural killer cells release and the two that we specifically look for are TNF alpha and interferon gamma we can then add treatment accordingly one of the things that sets ZFC apart is the ability to test for immune activation and to treat it accordingly. ZFC is located in the San Francisco Bay Area and we offer the full range of IVF services. We focus on optimum health as well as maximum science. Remember that 70% of pregnancy losses are driven by chromosomal abnormalities in the embryo. If you have experienced failed IVF with or without recurrent pregnancy loss, the best strategy going forward would include IVF with pre-implantation genetic testing or PGT of embryos and then delayed single normal embryo transfer. Before the transfer, we will do a careful evaluation of implantation factors, including the physical uterus, the window of implantation, as well as factors around immune activation and clotting. To set up a free consultation, email us at info at goivf.com or call our toll-free number 800-800-1160 or go to our website which is goivf.com.